Now we've completed our introduction to the two different cases that you need to be able to deal with to determine R or S. We've learned uh, how to determine priorities and then we dealt with two cases. What do you do when the number four priority is pointing into the page and what do you do when the number four priority is not pointing into the page? Uh, so what's left for us to do? Well, um, right now I'd just like to give you a bunch more examples and these examples will allow us to cover um, a few new topics we haven't talked about. In particular, um, as I mentioned um, a while ago in the videos, um, at, at the beginning of this very video series, we went over how to determine the priorities around the stereo center. But as I mentioned at that time, we didn't actually go over all the hardest cases. There are a few issues for determining priorities that you might see on some hard problems that we haven't discussed yet in this series of videos. Um, so that's one of the main things I want to go over here. How can you determine the priorities in some cases that are a little bit harder than we've seen before? Now actually, if you're in um, a, a relatively easy OCHEM class, then maybe you don't need to watch this set, uh, this portion of the videos, uh, because if your OCHEM class is pitched at a, at a relatively easy level, they might not give you any examples like this where it's more difficult to determine the priorities. On the other hand, if you're in um, a, a more difficult OCHEM class, there's a very good chance um, that you also need to be able to use some of the skills we're going to see um, in the portion of the videos that's coming up right now. So again, our goal here is to give you some more examples um, to help you get some more practice with R and S, and in particular, um, to get some more uh, practice with some more difficult cases for determining priorities. And we'll pick up a few skills here that we have not introduced yet in this series of videos. Let's try to um, determine R and S for this molecule. Again, I will remind you that whenever I pose a problem, I'm hoping that you're going to pause the video and try the problem on your own before you proceed. So I hope that you've given this a shot. Well, now, this is a Fisher diagram. We can see it's a Fisher diagram because we have intersecting horizontal and vertical lines with no dashes or wedges. But this introduces a new issue we haven't talked about yet because this has two stereo centers. This intersection is a stereo center, and this intersection is also a stereo center. So here's a new issue we haven't talked about before. What do you do when there's two separate stereo centers? Well, this is not really a very difficult issue. All you have to do is just determine whether each stereo center is R or S. And the only trick is you have to focus on one stereo center at a time. We're just going to focus on one stereo center at a time. So in fact, even though there's two stereo centers, I'm going to erase this asterisk. I'm going to erase it because for now, I only want to focus on the top stereo center. For now, we'll just be focusing on this top stereo center. The first thing we have to do is determine the priorities around that top stereo center. As usual, we put in dots to show the four atoms that are directly connected to the stereo center. So by the way, when there's more than one stereo center, this is one of the situations where it's especially helpful to use an asterisk to indicate the stereo center that you're focusing on. This bromine gets the number one priority. The hydrogen gets the number four priority. And then the carbon on the top is tied with this carbon down here. Notice that anytime we have an intersection of horizontal and vertical lines, the convention in a Fisher projection is that, is that this intersection represents a carbon. So this dotted carbon down here is tied with this dotted carbon up here. Since they're tied, we have to list the three atoms that each of those dotted carbons is attached to. The carbon on top is attached to a hydrogen, and another hydrogen, and another hydrogen. And the carbon on the bottom Let's carefully look at the three things that this carbon is attached to. It's attached to a fluorine, a carbon, and a hydrogen. A fluorine, a carbon, and a hydrogen. Fluorine, carbon, and hydrogen are the three atoms connected to this dotted atom. This is where, if you're not using careful notation, you might easily get confused. So this is where it's especially useful to put in the dot, and put in the arrow, and put in the list of the three atoms that the dotted atom is connected to. And as always, we have to put these in order from best to worst. Fluorine on top, then carbon, then hydrogen. Well, in this case, it's clear to see that this fluorine beats this hydrogen. So the bottom group gets the number two priority, and the top group gets the number three priority. Now that we've determined the priorities, we can erase the work that we used to determine those priorities.
Now we have to decide whether we're in case one or case two. Where's the number four priority? The number four priority is on the horizontal line, which in the Fisher projection is a wedge pointing towards you. This is pointing towards us, but that's not in accord with the official method, so we're in case two. We're going to have to make a swap to swap the number four so it's pointing away from us. You can swap it with either the three or the two, whichever you like. I'm going to swap it with the three. Since the number four did not start off pointing into the page, we have to swap it so that now it is pointing into the page. Now, what's the configuration on the page? One to two, two to three, back to one. That is counterclockwise, which is S. However, this, uh, we had to make a swap. So what was the configuration before the swap? We crossed that out and we know that originally, here we had an R configuration. I'm going to put that off to the side so we can remember that this top stereo center now has the R configuration. And let's make a note of how to interpret these horizontal and vertical lines here. Remember that the horizontal lines should both be interpreted as pointing towards you. And both of these vertical lines should be interpreted as pointing away from you. When we focus on this stereo center, we can interpret both um, these vertical lines as pointing away from you. 